Jock forced the steal. Right wing side scores. What a play by Kirby Dock. Pick the pocket of the defense. Well, I think we're a uh, pretty good point in our evolution as a team. Uh, we had some rebuilding years, but I think you know, every single year we've, uh, uh, since I've been here, we've we've improved our, our wins each year and our, our point totals. And, and last year we took a big step up. Uh, you know, had a, a good run and then lost in the second round to PA. And I think that left a lot of... Uh, our players with uh, a lot of motivation to kind of take it another step this year. So I think we're you know, we're in a good spot and we're uh, looking to just keep building on what we've been doing the last five or six years. Well, um, you know, we're going to have Nolan Neen. Um, you know, he's going to be, a, you know, hopefully a big time point producer and a big minute eater. He was our top minutes per game player last year. Um, you know, he had a 45 point season, um, you know, and, uh, in, in just uh, 55 games, so you know he had a uh, you know real great great year, and and uh, we expect him to be uh, one of the top defensemen in the league, uh, especially being a right hand shot. We still have a decision to make between Ryan Hughes and uh, Riley McKay, and you know both guys bring you know really different skill sets and um, different you know they're just very very different players. So uh, whoever we decide to go with um, you know that'll kind of shape the rest uh, you know the rest of our lineup well obviously Kirby would be a huge addition um, you know we don't know what the situation is going to be there uh, probably won't know until end of October kind of area but uh, you know if he returns we expect he'll be probably the best forward in the league so I think uh, that's a you know pretty big name to get back if he comes back um, you know, I think Tristan Robbins is going to have a big year. He, he was, um, you know, just because of our depth at center last year, he was in mostly a, a bottom six role and, and didn't get a ton of opportunities last year um, in the top six. But when he did at the end of the year and in the playoffs, he really thrived. And uh, we expect him to take a big jump. And uh, it's his draft year as well, so we expect big things there. Uh, Waters and floor check, we, we, you know, we really like at center and they're both going to be guys that we're going to rely on for offense. And, uh, you know, after that, it's just a group of guys that all had kind of, you know, years up and down years in terms of their production. And we're going to need to kind of see who kind of emerges from that group and uh, whether that's through additions that we can make to the group uh, by a trade or it's guys that are going to step up internally. So, um, you know, we're excited about Colton Bach. Uh, he had a, he's had a very strong camp and, you know, he's a very unique player. Uh, and uh, he's going to be a 16-year-old, so there's not, you know, a ton of uh, expectation on what he's going to do offensively. But we think he's going to be, uh, you know, a real capable player this season as a 16. And then, you know, we've got a battle with a bunch of 2,000-born players who are hoping to show what they've got between Kyle McNabb and Zach Huber and uh, guys like that. Where where Tyler Hall has come in and had a good camp, so. Um, we're looking to see which one of those uh, veteran forwards can kind of step their production up. Well, I think with Walford and Neen, you have two number one defensemen there. So whether they're a left and a right, so whether they play together or separately, I think you're going to see those guys on the ice a lot. And uh, Delago jean uh is going to have a big season here in his draft year, and he's going to, um, you know, have an enhanced role from what he had last year on a on a real deep defensive team last year. He didn't. Uh, have his bigger roles he'll have this year and he's come into camp and looked outstanding so uh, he's a guy that uh, we expect big things from and expect to be drafted in the NHL and then and adding Scott Walford uh, we feel it's um, a really good compliment there and you know we have two guys that we think are capable of being number one defenseman in this league with him and Walford so um, those are going to be you know guys that can really carry the load on the back end for us. Libor Zabranski, we acquired uh, in the Euro draft. He has two years' experience in the Western League uh, as a 19-year-old defenseman, right shot. Uh, he's been uh, really solid for us and so far, and we expect that he's going to be in a top four role. And then, um, you know, it's a real big competition after that. We've got uh, Radek Kucherik, who's you know just a huge physical kid, a throwback type def uh, defender, big physical defender. Um, he's going to be. Uh, a guy that's on the NHL radar for the draft this year as well in his draft year. And then, you know, there's plenty of guys from that point competing. Majid Kadura uh, was plus 16 last year in a limited role, and we expect that he'll have 
Uh, he'll be a contributor. Uh, we've got uh, Malchuk, who's come in from Victoria, uh, fighting for a spot right now. Uh, Alex Ozar is fighting for a spot. And we have a 16-year-old defenseman, Charlie Wright, who's still 15 until, I believe, November or December. But right now, he's uh, making a big case for himself to make the opening night lineup. So um, something will shake out there on the D side. But uh, we think we've got a really, really strong D core. Well, it's a big year for Mitch. Not only is he going to be, um, you know, heading up uh, our team, he's going to be uh, the assistant coach for the World Junior Team. So uh, he's got a big couple months ahead of him in terms of juggling the two um, positions and, and the preparation that goes into both. And then he'll be away for a month. So that'll be a great opportunity for Ryan Marsh to take over the bench for uh, a month and with Ryan Keller. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think we'll, Ryan Marsh will also be at the World Under-17s as a coach for a few weeks. So there's going to be some flux a bit with our coaching staff in the first half of the year. But uh, I think we're in incredibly good hands uh, with Mitch and his staff. Uh, I think he's an outstanding young coach, one of the best young coaches in the country. And um, our players will be extremely prepared. Uh, they'll be detailed and they're going to work very hard because that's what Mitch, Mitch expects and that's what Mitch brings each day to the rink. So um, if you don't kind of fit in with that mold with Mitch, then, uh, you know, it's not, it won't, if you don't kind of follow Mitch's lead, then uh, you're, you're not going to survive here in Saskatoon. So you know, I'm extremely happy with Mitch and our whole coaching staff. And I think the second year, our systems and our expectations are going to be clear from day one and uh, the learning curve will be, uh, a little less, so uh, really excited about that. I think it's going to be a really interesting year in the division. I think, uh, you know, Prince Albert is a team that people have talked about taking a step backward, but um, I don't see it being a big step backward. I, you know, obviously they're going to lose a lot of good players, but uh, they, they still have a lot of excellent uh, young forwards to build around and uh, a couple of really good uh, veteran D to go with uh, a few real high draft picks in Gooley and Allen. So um, I think they're going to be a dangerous team every night. Uh, I think Brandon's going to be much improved. Um, they don't lose much from last year aside from Matheos. And um, I think they've got a lot of depth, uh, really good coaching, obviously, with Lowry. And uh, they're going to be a team that's going to be a contender uh, for sure. And I think Winnipeg is going to surprise a lot of teams as well. Um, up front, they're as deep as really any team in our conference. They're going to have three or four lines that can score. Um, you know, and, and that'll be an interesting uh, kind of transition for them going to that, how do they play in a smaller rink and how do they play in a, in a different environment? But uh, I expect they'll be far better than they were last year. And then, you know, Regina is always a difficult team to play against. Uh, Dave Struish always has them. Uh, you know, I know they're still rebuilding, but they they gave us fits last year. Um, Every time we played them virtually, uh, uh, they're very hardworking and, and uh, they play to a good system. So they're, they're never an easy game, no matter if they're rebuilding or not. And I think Moose Jaw is uh, in the same boat this year, most likely as Regina, where they're going younger and rebuilding. But, you know, they're still going to be a team that's going to be, um, you know, a difficult task each night with a, a couple high-end players up front. And um, they're going to be a team that'll be structured and, and hardworking. So... Uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of easy nights in our division. And, uh, you know, I think there's multiple different teams that are going to be able to go on some different runs this year within the division.